Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Today we're going to be talking about democracy because honestly, don't we all want some to someone to explain to us what is going on? Like how did we all of a sudden find ourselves in the United States with this sort of coup and this sort of um, energy of wanting to be ruler or an autocrat or a king even for a day, as Trump says, that he will just be a dictator for one day. So this has got me talking to my spirit guides quite a bit because I like to understand things. I like to make sense of things. It helps me deal with the energy to understand it a little better. So what they told me was quite surprising, I think. And the first thing they said was democracy is for losers. And I was like, hey, wait a minute, you know, like, uh, what are you saying exactly? And they said, well, think about it. Democracy is for losers. For democracy to truly work, someone has to win and someone has to lose. And for it to really work, that balance of power has to be shifting all the time. If one person or party or ideology continues to win all the time, then it's not really a democracy, is it? Right? So part of the problem here is that these people don't want to lose. And you see this energy, you know, really the spirit guides are saying right now, remember, what was it, maybe 10 or even 15 years ago, the outbreak of fights at games, soccer games, football games, baseball games, where parents would fight each other because there was no sportsmanship. There was no, okay, I lost this one. Maybe that was a bad call. Maybe that was a bad law. Maybe that was a bad judgment, but you know what? I'm going to go with it and I'm going to see what I can do about becoming a better citizen or a better coach or a better player or a better parent that is at my my child's game. That kind of civility has sort of just disappeared, right? And I think it, it it's been groomed to be disappeared. There's been a certain segment of, of kind of talking heads. Maybe it's the Rush Limbaugh's, maybe it's whoever it is that really wants to instill in some people's minds, you're better than them. Why are you taking this from them? You shouldn't let them tell you what to do. They're wrong. You're right. What does that mean? I'm a sore loser. What is Trump? A sore loser. What are dictators? Sore losers. Putin right now is having an election in which he's not going to lose because he's made it so that he'll never lose. So democracy really depends on some on someone on everyone agreeing to lose and agreeing to be the better person. And you know now they're showing me Gore, you know, uh, Al Gore lost by a judgment by a court. He lost the presidency by a court. And he said, "Okay. All right. Hillary Clinton another person Right. She said, OK, I accept that I've lost. So where we are in in the out of balance situation right now is that these Republicans don't want to lose and they're doubling down on the fact that they are losing. We, you know, the spirit guides are talking about the great replacement theory that they often talk about, which is basically they're being replaced. White people are being replaced. And God forbid, even worse than that, white men are being replaced. They're being replaced in our media. The spirit guides are saying uh, they're being replaced um, in on the sports teams. Uh, they're being replaced everywhere. They're being replaced by women, too. So they're under attack. So they want a situation where no one has a choice and they're in charge. Now, what I found particularly shocking, honestly, I don't know why. I don't know why I'm shocked, I, I, but I was. As I was talking to them about the Supreme Court, and I was saying, I don't understand. Why would these you know, right-leaning Supreme Court justices give Trump immunity, even if it's a speck of immunity, even if it's a tiny little loophole, which that's what they want to do. You know, 
I need to circle back to Fonnie Willis, but they just create the tiny little hole in your sweater and you don't notice it. You're like, oh, nobody's going to notice that. I'll just cover it up, right? I'll, but it's there and they know it's there and they will circle back to it, circle back to it and circle back to it to make it bigger. The loophole, they find the loophole and then they exacerbate it and enlarge it and, you know, try to manipulate it. So with the Supreme Court justices, I was saying, why? Why would they give up their power? This is uh, counterintuitive to me that some justices that have lifelong appointments, these justices outlive presidents as far as their power goes. They are really and truly the most powerful because they stay in office through all of these different presidencies. And whatever that president had in mind as far as their platform, whichever direction the United States tends to go, the Supreme Court is always there, right? So why would they give away that power? So, so from a practical, pragmatic standpoint, I'm saying they're not gonna give away their power. I mean, that doesn't make any sense except for this. And I talked about it in my last video where I answered your questions. There is energy. There is energy that I cannot deny that these people, these, you know, whatever they are, four or five justices will give Trump immunity because they have the majority and they can do it. Now, why would they do that? This Okay. So why? So now I'm going to my spirit guides and I'm like, please help me make sense of this because I see the energy. I'm not saying it's going to happen. It might not happen, but it's it's there. The energy is there. They want to do it. They want to act on it. So I have to honor that. I have to just say it's there. Whether or not they're going to really do it, I would say that they're right now they're about 75% that they want to do it. So 25% that that maybe Roberts could be swayed because I really think when I look at those people, it's Roberts and honestly, Amy Coney Barrett also is like, eh, eh, you know, like she's having a hard time with it. Uh, probably because women know that you never get the power back. You know, once you give it away, it's over. You're, you know, people say, yeah, yeah, just do this for me or whatever. Take care of these kids for 10, 15 years, and then you can go start your career. And it never happens, right? So I think there's some part of her brain, perhaps, that, that's still in working order <laughs> that, that is like, is this, is this a good idea for me? I don't think so. So why would the other, why would they be considering it for 75%? Here's the shocking thing. The shocking thing to me was they don't want to lose. It's the same energy. They don't want to have to write the dissent. They don't want to be on the losing end. They want to be a court. They want to be the Supreme Court, but they want to be the Supreme Court that they know is handpicked by their dictator, whom, as long as they keep one person happy, they're golden. They've got their own little kingdoms. Right now, they're answerable to the populace, to history, to those other judges that maybe vote against them that maybe write a dissent against them, that makes them look wrong, that makes them look weak. In other words, what's happening? They're being challenged. They don't want to be challenged. When I went into the energy, that's what it suggests. It suggests they don't, they think so lowly of those three women that they think it's beneath them to even have to answer why they're ruling the way they are. They don't understand the idea of democracy, of this higher calling of, I see it this way, you see it that way. Maybe we can learn from each other. And what can we do? What is the word that basically they've made the worst word that you can say? And if it was a book, they would ban and burn it? Compromise. Remember when Mitch McConnell all these people said, we're not compromising. We're not. Now, when Biden was in the Senate, that's what he did. He was a consensus builder. He went across the aisle and built consensus. 
that way, in its way, our democracy wasn't perfect. It was never going to be perfect, not designed to be perfect. But it was going to be a little bit of what they want, a little bit of what this point these people want, maybe a little bit of what these people don't want. Maybe So it was going to be imperfect. Imperfect is the way that democracy works best. So I was shocked to see the disdain, the true, just real, I'm not even sure they're hiding it, disdain for these women. And I think it makes Amy Coney Barrett feel weird. Like she, she understands again. So we, we have this club, right? We have this special club where she's a member. She's a woman, but she's a member. We have this special club where Clarence Thomas is a black man, but he's a member. They only going to allow one or two that don't look exactly like them to get into this club. And then when they're, when you're in that club and you're super special because you must be special because you're the only woman in this club or the only black man or Hispanic person or whatever it is in this club, you have to disenfranchise everyone else that looks like you or is your culture or is your religion or whatever it is. You have to disenfranchise from them because you can't, you know, fraternize with the lowly, you know, those people and still be in the club. So this is how we got here. The Republicans don't want to compromise. They've been told you don't have to compromise. They've been told that if you compromise, you're giving away your power. If you give away your power pretty soon, you'll have no power because they see everything in absolutes. You either have it or you don't. They don't see it in this way of an imperfect option, an imperfect solution where I got 20% of what I wanted. Maybe I got 60 or 80% of what I wanted. I didn't get 100%, but I got 50. I'm happy for that. It's not perfect. They want 100%, which is honestly like a dictator, dictatorial energy. And because they think they're different, they think they're special, it's a kind of a pretty short hop, surprisingly, in my mind, to I am now going to be in the special class and in the special club, and we're going to anoint a special person, like a king or a dictator or an autocrat. And that's how we got here. That's This is where we are. This 100% is where we are right now. This is why the Supreme Court might say, or the majority might say, yeah, presidents should have immunity because they feel like they're not, because they don't want to, comp they, 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 they don't want to compromise. And they want the same immunity. Thomas wants the same immunity. All of them want the same, not all of them, but you know who I'm talking about. They want the same immunity. And once we give it to a president, then we can now give it to ourselves. It's a slippery slope, you guys. It's a pretty slippery slope. Now, on the other side of this coin, let me talk about this. On the other side of this coin are the Democrats right now. And the problem with being a Democrat at this point in time in our timeline is that you don't want absolute power because you are terrified of absolute power because you know that it often corrupts people. So the Democrats are like, we don't want a hundred percent. We refuse to take control of this situation and just say, we are going to, you know, without any, we're going to use all of our power. This is kind of where Biden is getting. This is what you see Biden doing now. He's saying, I'll do it. I'll do it. Get out of the way. I will do it. 
he's he's saying I will own 100% of the power of my decision and I'll take full responsibility for it, but I'm going to do it. I'm I'm not going to walk across the aisle anymore. I'm not waiting for compromise because compromise is off of the table and I'm finally accepting that. So Biden has gotten there. You know, when I was with Karen, the astrologer in my last video, she said as much, you know, Biden is now going to become the man he needs to become, not the man he wants to be. He wants to be the conciliator, the, you know, the compromise person. That's what he wants. But he can't do it. In this life, his lesson is that when you realize that, that you are the leader and you need to do what's best for your people, you may have to make that arbitrary, almost dictatorial decision that this is best for your people. Do you guys see the paradox? The Democrats have to step into this energy of get out of the way. You're not serious people. You've been infected with a mind virus. Uh, your egos have taken over. We are going to, for this period of time, like Trump says, I'll only be dictator for a day. The Democrats are going to have to stand up and say, we're going to pass laws without you. We're going to run roughshod right over you. When we have the majority, this coming end of 24 and into 25, we're going to pass laws like you've never seen. We're going to change the United States of America and we're going to make it look like Democrats think it should look. Now, if you were watching this from outer space, you bought a ticket for this game. You're eating your popcorn going, what's going to happen next, right? Because you're saying, well, who's right? Who's right here? The Democrats, and I would say that we're on the side of humans, <laughs> We're on the side of justice, that, that we are cleaving more closely to the document of the Constitution and the amendments. We're cleaving, you know, if you, if you say that the Constitution and the amendments is a GPS, and that was the beginning place, that was the map dot, and then you see that in that GPS, you the coordinates at that time from the founders, which we know were effed up because they didn't agree that everybody was human or everybody could vote. And it was a really effed up document. But if we say that the GPS coordinates are towards everyone is equal, women can vote, everyone has a say, if that's the coordinates we put in that document, then what I feel like is the Democrats are following that more than the Republicans are, who are saying we're going to cleave to the original writing of the document where some humans are not able to vote, some humans aren't even human, I don't even know what all crazy stuff, right? They want to go backwards. This is what Joe Biden has said himself. They want to take you backwards. I want to take you forwards. But the problem with Democrats is they don't feel comfortable standing in that power. This is where you, where you see Garland sort of waffling, sort of walking the line. I don't want to go too far this way. I don't want to go too far this way. I'm going to stay right in the middle. And this is what Biden started doing when he took office, right? He's like, uh-uh, I'm going to bring everybody together. We're going to hold hands. We're going to sing Kumbaya. We're all going to be together. Well, Biden has finally realized these people have lost their ever-loving minds. We have to literally do what's right for the country. And we have to do what's right for the country that we think is right. And that makes Democrats feel very uncomfortable because when you start saying, I believe my way is the highway, then you start to feel like someone who's got too much power. And that's why the Democrats are always faltering. They're always faltering. They're always falling for the Republicans' tricks because we want to give our power away because we understand that democracy is imperfect, 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 whatever it is. It's not perfect. 
We want to be the consensus. We understand how important it is for the health of our nation. Yet, we find ourselves in a place where we can't be in a place of consensus, where the people we're trying to talk sense with or even have some sort of bridge or connection to, either A, they don't want to, they refuse to, or B, they're at cross purposes for the real the real trajectory of democracy, of humanity. So now this explains to me why Democrats waffle, why they're so nice, why they don't just do to the Republicans what the Republicans do to them. It's because they understand in their soul, perhaps. I don't know that this is a, I'm not sure how many of them really think about this as a real construct. I think it's just baked into their into their awareness, into their into their soul that absolute power can corrupt. And we don't want that. We don't want absolute power. We want a middle way because we understand that this is a great big tent. I mean, by its nature, Democrats are a big tent with a lot of competing and conflicting interests. So by the, by, the, by the description, by the makeup of who we are, we understand we're never all going to agree. We're just not going to agree. And so we're easier with disagreement. We're easier with losing. We're easier with not having the power. So that's how we've been set up in this position where the Democrats' lesson, perhaps humanity's lesson, is... And it's not Democrats. I mean, because I'm saying it's Democrats only because we've been waiting for some Republicans to join. I mean, and you might say that Liz Cheney and Kinzinger and whoever has joined us, but I would say to you that, yes, they've joined us, but it's, they're, number one, the spirit guides are saying they're not lawmakers. They're literally like sitting on the sidelines simply cheering us. We need lawmakers to join us to create laws. Because we're in this place where the spirit guides told you guys, either join us, lead us, or get out of the way. The spirit guide said that last week, and now I see it that it's, it's in a statement from Biden. He said the same thing. The guides said it a week ago. So that's the energy. This is the energy. The, the Democrats are finally saying, lead, join, or sit down, get out of the way. But obstructing is not going to work anymore. It's not going to, because all they're doing is obstructing. They're not putting forth any leadership. They're not putting forth a platform. Their platform is obstruction. So in this way, they're going to force Democrats to step into the power. And really, I think for the first time in decades, say, we have a plan that we're going to stand behind and we're going to vote it through. We don't care if, if we don't get Republicans' votes. We don't care. We're not even looking for them. We're simply going to march. We're going to march all the way through 2025 passing laws. Now, there is, a, there is an energy that I've noticed for the past 18 months to two years that Democrats could get this power and not use it. And, and, the, and the spear guides have talked about this because if, not if, I guess there's an if, and I mean, that's what they're saying, but I don't understand. Anyway, if we get the power, if and when we get the power, if we don't use it, the if is if, if we use the power, right? If we use the power or if we don't use the power, if we don't use the power, our constituents, our new constituents, the young voters are out. They're 100% out. I've said this many, many times in 2028, if the Democrats don't get in there, and, and I hate to say it, but truly run roughshod right over the Republicans and vote back, you know, a women's right to choose, vote back very serious fixing of student debt and, and just put some real consumer protections in, 
and add some more consumer bennies, uh, some more consumer rewards, rewards for citizens. These younger voters are going to go rogue in 2028, and they are going to vote third party. They're going to throw a wrench in the whole system. So here's our lesson. The Democrats are afraid to step into power because they don't want to be like Republicans who want, who actively want to be like dictators. And, and Democrats are terrified of that energy, yet they have to, they have to step into power. They have to do it to be able to really fulfill their promise to their constituents. So you see this whole thing is a paradox. It's a conundrum. And, and at, any, at any rate, it makes me feel better a little bit about Democrats that are so wishy-washy. Now I get it. This is really good for democracy because, because as they always tell you, the, the scales have gotten way too out of whack. So it's going to look like the Democrats are ha having too much power when in reality, they're simply using a lot of this power to get the scales closer in balance. Remember, they're never going to be balanced, but closer. So there's going to be some time when the Democrats are going to be like, looking like they have too much power. And you're going to hear that in the media. The Democrats are running rogue, are running roughshod over the Republicans. The Democrat House and Senate is... You know, the, the Republicans are going to say, look at them being the dictator, look at them. And we have to get our heads around that. We we have to, and including when I say we, I mean the royal we, I mean the Democrats that are in office have really got to get their head around the fact that you have to do what's right for the people, for your constituents. And if your constituents want a woman to have a right to choose, if your constituents want a higher minimum wage, if your constituents want better uh, race uh, laws, better equal treatment laws. If if you know if your constituents want an expanded Supreme Court that perhaps is staffed by three new Democrats and not a Republican and two Democrats or two Republicans and you know this is what the Democrats do, right? This is what we do. Trying to be fair. Look at Christopher Ray, still in there. You know, look at Garland, still in there. You know, they these people are not liberals. They're not liberals. So we're trying to be fair, but no one else is being fair. No one else is playing ball with us. So we have to just decide this is not a game anymore. There's no compromise happening. We throw the ball over there and they take it and run and sell it, you know, to the highest bidder, you know. Um, so we're going to stop doing that. And we're just going to we're just going to have our own. Th then what happens, which is a whole nother video. Is then the then the balancing, the power balancing. Does not happen between the Democrats and the Republicans. It happens between the Democrats and the Democrats. Then you have the AOCs mixing it up with um, whoever on the other side that might be more moderate. Maybe Fetterman and AOC don't disagree, don't agree. You know, maybe Jeffries doesn't agree with somebody else. And now we have our own internal conflict, our own internal balancing. But there's always going to be balancing. There's always going to be a loser. If you want to think about it like that, there's always going to be compromise. And so I'm going to circle back around to Fonnie Willis because I made a, a, a verbal mental note uh, about that, but I don't remember that it, it had, it made sense. Um, Fonnie Willis. Okay. So th there's this sense of it's, it's all of a piece. The guides are saying, so this judge uh, uh, allowed her to stay on the case, but, but he said some really kind of unnecessary things about her that I think the guides think, and also some legal scholars think that were unnecessary, not as bad, but almost like her said about Biden. It's like they take this opportunity and they get like a little bit of a mouthpiece and they spout off things that have nothing to do with nothing. 
so he made some accu the guides are saying he made some accusations about her um ethics and about uh he he really kind of made accusations worded in legalese like mendacity 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 something that cast aspersions on her ethics and her truthfulness he was coming for her you guys no doubt about it in my mind these people want to throw the power but they understand they can't just do it overtly. They can't just do it because that would be a coup. That would bring this energy of the media and everybody would say, hey, you can't do that, right? The, the appeals court, everybody would be on this judge. It's the same thing with the Supreme Court. If they give him immunity, everybody's going to be on them. It's going to be seen as a really wacky, you know, ruling they're going to call call a lot of attention to themselves so instead they do these little bites they're they're just the little hole in the sleeve they come back later by demeaning her they've they've given her a black eye they've given her a public black eye they've demeaned her character they've a character assassinated her she's running for office he's running for office they wanted to to say, we're we're letting you know you're on notice. We're coming for you, but we're going to do it under cover of night. You know, we're gonna we're gonna do it when you're not looking. We're we're gonna send little poison darts at you when you're not looking, and eventually we hope that these little poison darts can then become a bigger issue that we can then use against you. I'm, I'm telling you, this is the energy of this judge. I saw him overrule, 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 overrule time and again, Fonnie Willis's attorney and allowed this crazy questioning to keep happening that wanted to know when she had sex, how, how much sex. This wasn't about sex. This was about money. Why are we talking about sex? Because he wanted to, to humiliate her. He wanted to humiliate her. And let me just tell you, that didn't work. It, I mean, it did give Fonnie Willis a big, I mean, she's chilled. Her energy is chilled, okay? Uh, she saw it for what it, where it was. She saw the takedown in real time. She saw the players. The thing I think that surprised her is she didn't see it coming. She really didn't see it coming the way it gelled and came at her. It was a surprise attack and that that has put her back on her heels. And now what she's doing is she's looking around for other foes. She is assessing her environment. She's assessing who is a foe. You know, we have uh, the governor of Georgia who signed into law that bill that they passed that says that the governorship or the state has the ability, the ability to remove a DA if they feel like they're not performing. So he has the ability to remove her. But that would be perhaps a bridge too far. And they know they know where the lines are right now. So instead of crossing the line, what they're doing is they're walking up to it and blurring it. You know, think about a line in the sand. As somebody walks over the line or walks on the line, the line is blurred. And then when no one's looking, you can make a new line. So what they're doing is harassing her, intimidating her, trying to throw her off her game. Now they're also harassing, to be honest with you, the judge. He said, I had this ruling a week early, but it took me a week to put security in place for my family. Now the security is not for Democrats. It's for Republicans who are mad that he let her off the hook. So he's catching it from both sides. Now, what I see for Fonnie Willis is she's going to go forward, but but I don't even understand this. So remember, you long, long time viewers, uh, the guides went through this period of time where they kept saying Atlanta was ground zero. Uh, they said it for about a month. So over four, five, eight videos. 
Atlanta is ground zero. I never understood it. I still don't think I understand it. At the time, I thought it meant that Fonnie Willis was doing RICO charges. And so she was going to be the one in my pragmatic understanding. And I think the guides told me this, but things changed. That she was going to be the one that was going to put these, put the smack down, so, so it might be called, on these Congress people through the RICO. So connected to Trump, connected to Jan 6, connected to the fake electors, which connects you back to Jan 6, she was going to cast this net to some of these Congress people. And indeed, her case is a RICO case. Her case does have a lot of other people involved in it, whereas Jack Smith really focused solely on Trump, like a laser beam right on Trump. So that's a kind of big difference between these two cases. Now, what I see happening is they show me this last night. It's it's almost like a bullet train. Like I, I see in pictures and metaphors, and I was trying to, how do I describe this to people? Well, it looks like a bullet train that leaves Atlanta and it goes straight up the coast and it goes to two cities, New Jersey or two states, New Jersey and New York. It goes to New Jersey and New York. Her bullet train goes straight up there. Now, how does that happen? I don't know. I don't understand it. Perhaps the that means Trump, right? Perhaps she uh, calls in her case. Maybe she she says, I'm going to make my case tighter because she's lost time now. She's lost a lot of time. And she really wants this. There's a sense of wanting to move this case faster. Now, she was saying before that the case would likely be tried in November. But now legal analysts are saying, no way she's going to get this together because she's running for office too. So is the judge. But I see this bullet train going straight to New York State, to New York City, and to New Jersey. And I don't know what that means. You'll have to stay tuned. Now, so Fonnie Willis... I think that with all the astrology that's going on, with the power to the people, and also the fact that the divine feminine seems to be waking up and and waking up and waking up. And it, it's almost like they're showing me like someone, like a bear, a mama bear that's been in the den over the winter. And she wakes up and she's growling. Uh, you know, she could just be talking, but it sounds like a growl to me. <laughs> Maybe that's how she talks, but I'm hearing a roar. She seems displeased, you know, she seems displeased. So what I'm seeing for Fonnie Willis is I'm seeing women come out to support her and men, frankly. It's it's the same energy, and I don't know why it's the same energy. Perhaps the voters overlap in their in their interest. You know, it's the same voter group, but it's the same group that would be very active in campaigning for and voting for women's right to choose. It's those people have now been activated to support Fonnie Willis. Fonnie Willis was on that witness stand and she was done to, she was done to in public what women experience every day. I've experienced it, right? You know, I mean, maybe not to that degree, but you know, when you're doing something and you happen to be with a guy who is maybe a friend, but everybody talks to him and they don't talk to you. And they're showing me that recent um, congressional hearing where this Republican was interviewing a woman who said, I'm a pilot for, I think it was United Airlines. And he said, can you tell me about your life as a stewardess? She just told this mf -er, I'm a pilot. And he said, can you tell me about your work and life as a stewardess? Which is not even the correct term for this freaking decade. You know? So women and men saw the disrespect. And, and you want to add another layer to it of a black woman. They saw this disrespect of this black woman. And it's on. It's all on. Atlanta will become a moving. It's like when you see a pile of ants and you can't even see what's under the ants anymore. 
All you can see is this movement of all the millions of ants. That's what Atlanta is going to look like on election. They're going to vote Biden in. They're going to vote Fonnie Willis in. And she's going to get her opportunity. She's not going to lose her opportunity, but I'm telling you guys, she's chilled. She's not, she's been knocked on her back on her heels. She's going to be more careful because she understands the rules of engagement have changed. She doesn't have the power. Um, so back to that whole thing in the beginning of the video about power. She now realizes the power quotient has changed because now Kemp has the ability to take her, you know, I don't even understand how that can happen if she's elected. I'm telling you, the people are going to get in the streets about this stuff, like with DeSantis, just taking, who did he take out? The DA too, I think, uh, that was elected. How can you remove somebody, the people elected? This is a bunch of Mickey Mouse, unserious games these people are playing, and they're going to really rue the day they ever did it. I promise you that because 2024 and 2025 is going to be people having a long memory, a long memory. Like when you're in that relationship and you've been holding it in and holding it in and then pretty soon the dam breaks and you remember what they did in 2019 <laughs> and you're going to tell them what they did in 2019. You know, this is the voters. The voters have a long memory. They've been disabused for too long. They're they're ready to take matters in their own hands is what I just heard. So again, there's this sense of we're going to step into the power. Now, even though the voters are stepping into the power, Biden is stepping into the power. There's other power quotients. There's other power centers that aren't doing it. And I think Fonnie Willis is going to be one of those people that I would say before this attack on her, she was feeling very in, empowered, very in control, very focused, very successful, like everything is in hand. Now she feels knocked off her power. Now she feels, okay, I've got enemies and I don't even know who they are. I've got to be careful because shite just went down and I need to step back and reassess. So I think she's going to reassess the cases that she's bringing I think she's going to tighten some of them up and make them impenetrable and run with those. But she's not going to take her, they just showed me, she's not going to take her eyes off of Raffensperger. She's not going to take her eyes off of Kemp. She's not going to take her eyes off of those other power centers and, and Trump and his minions. You know, she's not going to take her eyes off of them. And the last thing I'll say, because they really have been talking about this, and I don't understand why I'm saying it, but I am, is that look to countries that have balanced, have that have rebalanced an out of balance power quotient. So look at Germany and look at how they had to put strong laws against anything Nazi, right? You know, like you just can't do that. It's against the law in Germany. So they had to take their out of balance energy and make a law against it, which is in some ways dictatorial, right? We're not giving you free choice around this. This is what America is going to have to do. You don't get free choice around this because we found that this is harmful. That's what America has to do. This is what we will be doing. And they want to say, Japan, look how Japan, you know, Japan had its freedoms curtailed within on the world stage. Um, look at South Africa. Right now, South Africa is really in a kind of a dicey position, even though they did a, kind of a miraculous thing when they got rid of apartheid. You know, when that, when that community came together and they had the truth council, I mean, and they held people to like to account, but they had to draw a line somewhere. They didn't put everybody in prison or whatever the, the you know, they had to draw a line and it was not a perfect line. It was not a perfect line. Should some of those people that got off have really been held accountable and been punished? Probably. 
but they had to draw a line somewhere. And now you see South Africa kind of coming around to more power problems, to giving their power away, to having this, you know, balancing, power balancing issues. I feel like this is our lesson. This is the world's lesson going into 2025 all the way through 2030, even in Australia. I mean, it's no one is going to be immune to this because as we deal with our wounds and, and most all of our countries have wounds around the inception of the country, looting, pillaging, you know, takeover, genocide, all of Europe is one big battlefield, right? And certainly the United States has its wounds that it is going to be trying to heal. That means balance. That means as you come into balance, a little bit more into balance and you're thinking, whew, that was rough, that was hard. Guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna have another thing to debalance you, unbalance you, because then perhaps the native American peoples are saying, okay, well, you think you're balanced, but nobody nobody has get, given us our due. We want our voice. We want our reparations. Then perhaps maybe African-Americans come in and say, we want our reparations. The work is not done. It's about compromise. And this is the lesson. However, sometimes... Somebody has to stand up and say, I'm going to be the adult in the room. And you know what? We're going to get to you. We understand and we're giving you a formal apology and we're going to do these things for you. But we are also going to understand we can't make you whole right now. We don't have the ability for the reparations right now. Or we don't have the ability to listen to what the Republicans want right now because what they want doesn't track with our trajectory from our GPS, from the founding fathers of humanity, of love, of equality. So it's gonna be imperfect, always, always, always imperfect. So in that way, I hope that that helps you understand the energy that we're having, that we're going through and how people can seemingly be voting against their own best interest uh, how people can be um, so exclusionary. Oh, I need to just say this last thing. So another another metaphor that I did not talk about because now, now we're going to bring it into your living room, okay? So we talked about this world stage, United States stage. We're going to bring it right down into your living room. How does this play out in your living room? Well, if you have a MAGA, if you have a person who believes in Trump and believes that Trump should be a dictator for a day, if you have some energy like that in your home or in your extended family or even in your community, here's the reasoning behind that, that the guides help me understand. Okay, it goes back to the very first thing that we talked about with the club, how Amy Coney Barrett is in the Supreme Court male club how Clarence Thomas is in the club, the Republican super powerful club of the Republican Supreme Court. Well, if you're a MAGA, you believe you're in the club. And this has been going on for, I guess, 20 years since Reagan, where I remember my dad and both my dad and my brother are in spirit. Um, but at the time, my dad said, why is your brother voting Republican? He doesn't have enough money to be a Republican. <laughs> and I remember going, I don't know, dad. I don't, I don't know what, why. I can't, I can't imagine myself. Well, because if you put that Republican sticker on your car, you're in the club. Even if your car is not a Mercedes or a, a Beamer or whatever, even if your car is not a $100,000 car, you got a $100,000 sticker you in the club. And how they explained it to me was when I was really involved in politics in my local community, I was also a photographer. So I photographed a lot of these people. I got to meet them. I got to know them. I photographed their families, all that stuff. Well, the sheriff for the county that I live in, of course, I was involved in this guy's campaign to a degree and I'd photographed him and whatnot. 
and at a fundraiser, and I'm, I wasn't a big fundraiser. I was more like a work, a work, a working bee, a worker bee. I was like a worker bee. So he comes up and he gives me this sticker to put on my car. And I'm not really a sticker person. And he said, you need to be sure to put this on your car. Don't lose it. This is a different sticker. And I was like, okay. And I mean, I could tell he was being really like, I think he was holding my hand and he was putting the sticker in my hand and he kept holding my hand and looking at me. And I'm like, why are you holding my hand, dude? You know, I'm not a touchy feely person, but anyway, so I, I didn't think anything of it. I threw the sticker in the car, like in the dash glove box, something. And when I was uh, going to the next Democrats meeting, somebody said, where's your sticker? I saw you talking to the sheriff because he had won. And I said, I put it in the, I don't, you know, I don't really do that. And they said, are you kidding me? You got a gold sticker. And I said, what, is, what does that mean? What do you mean? They said, regular people, supporters, regular supporters got green stickers. It was like an outline of a badge, but the outline was white background, green badge, white and green. But to certain people, like maybe less than 50, they got gold. It wasn't green. It was a gold outline. And I, he, he said, you got a gold sticker. And I said, I don't understand. He said, put that on your car. You're never going to get a speeding ticket. You could do anything. <laughs> yeah, that is your get out of jail free sticker. And as long as this man is sheriff, you will never have a problem. Even if you're in a different county, because they all know. And even if you get pulled over by state police, even if you get pulled over by um, local police, everybody knows you're in the club. Do you guys get it? So by having a MAGA sticker, I think I'm in the club. I'm special. So when Trump is the dictator, theoretically, when Trump is the dictator, I'm going to be in the club. They're not going to come for my guns because I got a MAGA sticker. I'm in the club. I'm special. I'm above all of y'all. So I'm not voting against my rights. Nobody's going to take my guns. They're going to take your guns. They're going to take your rights. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take your rights. I'm going to take your shit. Because I'm in the club and I'm over you. Now, do we think that's really going to work? No, it's not going to work. They're going to come for them people's guns. They're going to come for them people's money. It never works. But they believe it. Unfortunately, they believe it. Now, in my situation, I think I did put that sticker. I'm like, I'd be stupid not to put this sticker on my car. I think I put it on my car. And I mean, I'm not a person who typically gets a lot of tickets, but, you know, or any tickets, but I, I did, you know. And in my case, it paid off. Who knows? If Trump were a dictator for a day, there could be a situation where you have a second group of citizens in your community that are truly above, like in a communist country where those people are the people who control everything, right? They control how much food you get. They control whether you get heating, <laughs> whether you get that nice apartment or you don't get a nice apartment. It's power, absolute power. That's why they think no one's coming for their guns. That's why they think I'm voting for this guy because he's got my back. Now that became, that started to become unraveled because when the Jan Sixers started going to prison, remember all the other Jan Sixers and a lot of the people that supported the Jan Sixers started saying, what's Trump doing? He's not doing anything. Why is he letting our people go to jail? So they started to get out of alignment with Trump. And then Trump changed his, his tune. Now he calls them hostages and he says, I will pardon them all. So he understands that to keep the mind virus active, he's got to feed it the echo chamber. Be aware of echo chambers. He's got to feed it what they want to hear. Uh, you're special. You're better than them. You're not like them. You're better. So you can understand how SCOTUS, how the Supreme Court might vote to give away their power. You can understand how MAGAs might give away their money, their last $10 to 
to this guy because he's offering them a chance to be in the club, the special club, the club that only a few people are in. So that is why. So hopefully this is, you know, connected a lot of dots for you guys as to why, because I, I kept asking my spirit guides, like I make it make sense. Make this make sense for the love of God. I don't understand how these people are thinking like this. But now you can kind of understand how the Democrats are not taking control or not stepping up to the plate 100% because they don't want to. They don't want to be an autocrat. They want to be a democracy. They want to work together with somebody. And they're just waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally, Biden's like, they're not coming. These people have all the way lost their minds. We have to step into the breach and keep democracy from going down the drain. And I, I don't think this is our lesson anyway. Our lesson is not to lose democracy, but our lesson is to stand in the power. So in your own life, as I always tell you guys, if you're seeing it on the big world stage, it's happening in your personal life because energy is like air. I'm breathing the same air that a lot of other people are breathing, except for energy is even more permeating. We're all stewing in the same energy. We're all into the same stars. So in this way, your lesson might be to stand in your power. Where are you looking for someone to shoulder the power with you, to co-parent, to co-work? to pull their load and they're not doing it. Same energy. It's the same energy. You may have to stand up and say, and be the dictator for a day. You may have to stand up and say, no, I'm not taking this anymore. I'm not listening to your opinion. I'm not honoring your wishes because they go against what's best for me and my mental health. And that's what's most important here. So goodbye. Big lessons, right? Big lessons we all have. Take really, really good care of yourselves. Everything's going to be okay. And I'm proud of us. I'm proud of all of us. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of me. I'm proud of all of us. This is hard work. And we're here reincarnated in this lifetime at this time to be here, to be here, to stand in the breach of not only democracy, but to stand in the breach and protect humanity and love and compassion all of those things. That's why we're here today is to stand in the breach to protect that, to protect those really important things. So listen, thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. I really appreciate all of your support. We're all in this big ship together and everything is going to be fine. And I think hopefully through this video, you've got some more resources or understanding so that you know, you're not triggered as much or you can make some more sense of it. And maybe you can even make more sense of it than I've made here and connect even more dots and put those dots and those aha moments in the comments below. If you like this kind of content, hit the subscribe button, the like button. If you think your local Democrat club would be interested in hearing about this or friends, share this video. And uh, I'll see you again in the next video really soon. For entertainment purposes only.